Are you telling me you built a time machine out of a DeLorean? There's no DeLorean necessary to go back in time, just a podium. President Barack Obama making statements Monday about creating infrastructure banks, statements that have echoes of the past. But could we imagine a project where we're rebuilding roads and bridges and ports and schools and broadband lines and smart grids and taking all those construction workers and putting them to work right now? Actually, I can't imagine such a plan, and I don't even have to take a DeLorean to 88 miles per hour. It was the 2009 stimulus bill that spent over $800 billion, and according to the Congressional Budget Office, only ended up employing about 3.6 million people. That's a cost of over $228,000 per job. But at the time, it was heavily touted. We intend to double our capacity to gen uh, generate renewable energy while redoubling our efforts to use energy more efficiently. We will rebuild crumbling roads and retrofit aging transit systems and renovate 10,000 schools for our children. It does sound familiar, doesn't it? For CNSNews.com, I'm Eric Sch Hello everyone, welcome to Global Government News. Today is Tuesday, July 12th, 2011, and I'm Darko. Uh, welcome everyone to this news bulletin for today. Uh, my website is www.ggnonline.com. That's www.ggnonline.com. Uh, ddarko2012 is my YouTube channel, so go out there and check that out. Um, this is a poll. I'm gonna. I have a new poll up um, after this video. I just wanted to leave it up here so I can throw it in this first uh, uh, news video, just to show the results uh, because there is some news on Gaddafi's uh, possible exit here today. Uh, how do you think the situation in Libya will end and um, the final results where Gaddafi will remain the leader and uh, Libya will remain a sovereign nation at 35 uh, percent but 45 percent of the voters um, say Gaddafi will either step down or uh, be assassinated and Libya will lose its sovereignty and so far that's what it looks like it's going to be. Uh, the third was uh, of course not sure and I was uh, a little unsure myself, uh, but I kind of leaned towards Gaddafi will, will uh, step down or be assassinated. And that's the news out today is saying that uh, he's on his way out pretty much. He's, he's ready to go. So I don't know if that's propaganda like Venezuela and Chavez dying on the death table as he was going through um, some... Uh, uh, surgery in that. But either way, uh, you can check me out on Facebook here, Network Blogs. All right, I'm going to start off here with the economy as usual, and I have a lot of news to get to, so I'm going to keep flying here. Uh, go through and check them out if you're a new viewer. I usually post the links in uh, YouTube's video description. Um, it says here, Europe and tech uh, push Wall Street to third day of losses. Uh, stocks close lower for a third trade day on Tuesday as Europe's fiscal woes and a weak start to tech earnings gave investors little reason to buy even after the recent losses. Then Chinese news, China stocks fall 1.72% on Tuesday. Then we have Treasuries rise on Ireland's down. It says here, worries about the Eurozone's debt troubles were stirred again, or fear-mongering by the international lenders, again by the downgrade of Ireland's credit rating Tuesday, pushing up prices of safe haven treasury bonds. Moody slashed Ireland's rating to junk status, raising concerns that some other Eurozone countries could uh, risk being cut in coming weeks. And this is, uh, you know, this is just really sad to watch uh, because this is the uh, infrastructure that was set up uh, by the same people that are going to be there uh, with open arms trying to help these countries, as they say. Uh, Chinese forex reserves hit nearly 3.2 trillion U.S. dollars. Chinese uh, or China's foreign exchange reserves rose 30.3 percent year on year to hit 3.19 trillion U.S. dollars by the end of June. The People's Bank of China, or the central bank, said on Tuesday. Uh, next up, we're going to go into commodities uh, briefly. Uh, they're still uh, moving upwards. And uh, looking here at Brent crude, it's at $117 down a tad. Gas oil futures up a dollar twenty-five, and uh, heating oil is uh, down two dollars and twenty-four cents. Natural gas uh, looks like it's up a little bit. Gasoline again uh, moving down to agriculture. Uh, most of them were up, uh, except for cotton, which was down four dollars and forty-nine cents, and uh, coffee was also down. But uh, all of the rest of them were up, including wheat futures, which, which were up thirty-two and uh, twenty-one dollars. Moving on to metals, copper was four hundred. 
$1,238.60, up $1.80. Gold at $1,568, up $18.80. And then silver up about $0.42 cents at $36. Silver's pretty much been staying at uh, around the same amount. Um, says here gold little change uh, may gain for sixth session on european debt crisis gold futures little change in new york may rise for the sixth straight session on mounting demand for a haven uh, amid yeah, europe's escalating debt crisis that's right they're just playing with funny money fiat currency and uh, yet you know things with intrinsic value uh, usually will go up in value uh, as they play their little games, their little banker games. Uh, China's gold output up nearly 3.7% from January to May. China's gold output for the first five months of this year rose 3.67% uh, year on end to hit 132 metric tons according to statistics released on Tuesday by the Ministry of Industry and Information Technology. Okay, um, oil, a little more news on oil here as soon as it comes up. Oil rises on weaker dollar. A technicals, oil rose on Tuesday, shaking off two days of losses to turn positive on a weaker dollar and supportive uh, technicals. Netflix, uh, you may um, be interested in some of this news. Um, says here, Netflix boosts DVD streaming prices by 60%. I, I kind of saw this coming when they first announced it because um, they, they hinted at it. And it says here, uh, the online and mail order movie rental company raised prices by 60% for U.S. subscribers who want both services. Okay, so who want both services? It says citing the cost to acquire and deliver films and TV shows. So you can go in there and read uh, more of the things talking about they're no longer going to offer a nine, or basically a $10 package of DVD by mail and unlimited streaming. And um, it, it does cost a lot of money for them to put this into streaming. Um, a lot of these movies, and that's where this uh, where this uh, increased cost. That's why it's coming. It says last minute tuition hikes hit students. Almost 20 states have cut funding for colleges, uh, raising costs for students, and that's starting now. Regulator criticizes universities are clear to charge 9,000 pound fees. Most universities in England are being allowed to charge a maximum tuition fee of 9,000 pounds a year uh, for at least some of their. Uh, courses. Moving on, inflation down as prices are cut. Inflation unexpectedly fell last month as retailers cut prices in response to the tightening squeeze of household incomes. It says here, figures revealed today. And it says here, reductions in the prices of digital cameras, televisions, and women's shoes prompted a fall consumer price index to an rate of 4.2%. Okay, moving on uh, to more uh, uh, commodities and uh, prices. The goods pushing inflation up. And they basically just show pictures here. We just covered about the electronics. It looks like uh, tobacco, wheat, uh, possibly potatoes. Um, moving on here, it says here, retail sector conditions uh, at worryingly low levels. According to business survey, conditions uh, in the retail sector have fallen to worryingly low levels in June. As Australia's economy struggles to recover from the flood-related slowdown it suffered in late 2010. Uh, Chinese consumer confidence drops in June. Chinese consumer confidence dropped in June largely due to rising food prices, according to an index released on Monday. Uh, food prices continue to skyrocket even when gas prices fall, and yet uh, don't forget utility prices uh, are, are on the rise. It says here food prices are skyrocketing. Part of the reason why is because as the world's population rises, so too does food consumption. So I don't think they're uh, talking about overpopulation. They're just talking about simple supply and demand. Uh, but it says here one of the primary reasons why prices are climbing so dramatically is because fuel prices have shot up in the past year. Yet even as gas and diesel prices have begun to fall recently, uh, food costs haven't. According to fuel price tracking website GasBuddy, it said uh, prices have slipped nearly 20 cents in the past month. But prices for commodities and some staples like coffee, bacon, meat, pastas, and other items shot up 40% over the past year. Cotton, too, has risen dramatically, making clothes more expensive. Okay, materials hike will add $5,000 to Australian home prices. It says here the average cost of building a home is set to rise by $5,000 as a carbon tax pushes the price of construction materials higher. And then we have an analyst saying uh, even dollar stores are struggling in the Obama depression and more stores that offer in the U.S. that offer deeply discounted products are uh, seeing their sales decline after years of growth amid uh, America's Great Recession. And one analysis said on Monday it's another sign 
of an even deeper downturn. That's what they were talking about in that last article about the food prices affecting the lower and middle income people. Job openings flat in May, a sign of slow hiring. And then the glum and the restless. Nearly one in five recent grads is out of work. Uh, could that hurt Obama's re-election bid? I honestly don't give a damn. Cisco CEO vows faster innovation. How is he going to do that? Oh, how do they, all these big corporations do that? Uh, Cisco may cut as many uh, as... Uh, 10,000 jobs, it says. Then here we move on to uh, Toronto to offer buyouts to 17,000 city workers and little hiring seen by small businesses. And it said it could say sluggish for a while. China's new bank lending hits 633.9 billion won in a year. So China's new bank lending rebounded. And it says here in June from May's 551.6 billion won, the People's Bank of China said on Tuesday, then credit card interest rates at a record high in Australia. This is the highest interest rate in 20 years. Moving on here, U.S. trade gap nears three-year high. United States trade deficit exceeded 50 uh, billion U.S. dollars in May, pointing to the widest such gap since October 2008, official data says. Then uh, Rasmussen poll, 72% favor free market economy over one managed by the government, which is exactly what we have. It says here, uh, federal tax revenues have exceeded interest payments 20-fold since the U.S. Uh, hit debt limit. And go in there and check that out. Obama, no quick fix for economy. And uh, the only fix that he has is to uh, have the government intervene. Says here, Obama says he cannot guarantee Social Security checks will go out on August. And talking about agreeing on reducing the deficit, whether they're going to raise taxes on the rich. And this is all class warfare. This is all bullshit. And this is how it's made to. Uh, this is how it's made to be. Uh, basically, uh, to pit people off against each other, different classes. The fact of the matter is, they don't have to do all that raising the debt ceiling and all that. All they have to do is reduce spending and stop the goddamn wars. You know, I think that's going to cost most of the money, but that's not the that's not the purpose. The purpose is to use the poor and um, and bribe them uh, to keep uh, uh, electing um, a holes like this. Excuse my uh, my French here, but uh, that's basically what it is. And um, so, yeah, he's going to play games with the poor and stuff like that. It says, uh, will the economy crash when government checks run out? And uh, no, of course it won't. The economy is when people just trade. That's all it is. You don't need a government in order uh, for economy to exist. And uh, actually, it'll thrive without the government intervening. Fred Minutes, or Fed Minutes, some ready to ease if recovery lags, said uh, they're talking about another stimulus. And Geithner wants debt limit deal by next week. Why? Because he's mulling to quit after the debt debate. So he's going to, like I said, jump ship. Minnesota shut down. Longest in recent history. No new talks. Be interesting to see when they get back up. Like I said, though, they won't be too long. Because once people realize how free they are without it and how much pro more prosperous they are, uh, people that, that, that uh, stateless society f uh, will st uh, fervor or idea will start to spread like wildfire, I think. Europe considers Greek default lenders to meet. Italy seeks swift austerity approval. So now Italy is on the... Uh, on the block here. Ireland cut to junk rating. We already covered that there. Belfast riots revive troubles in Ireland. Poll shows majority against carbon tax. Says here voters still oppose Prime Minister Julia Gerrard's carbon tax. The next up, carbon tax may trigger rate hikes ahead of July 2012 introduction. So interest rate hikes ahead of GST. Moving on, UK pushes low carbon electricity plan. And it Tuesday proposed legislation aiming at securing $110 billion in investment in low carbon electricity and the biggest shakeup, and of course, right, siphoning from the public sector to the private sector. So you're going to help fund these big corporations so they can get on their feet. Energy bills to double in five years as customers are hit by switch to green power. That's in the UK now. Finishing up here, Agricultural Bank of China says profits up 45% since China secures first top-level post at IMF. That's right. This is the changing of the guard from the west to the east. Economically, IMF names U.S.'s Lipton to number two post. And and then check this out. Uh, he worked for Citigroup. He was also uh, working in the Treasury under Mr. Uh, Secretary Rubin. And uh, yeah, so he specializes in Russia, Poland, and Slovenia, which is also going to be uh, the new economy. Blackwater's new director, Bill Clinton's uh, lawyer, then Montreal ER overcrowding spikes. That's big, big time up there. Plans to scrap checks dropped in uh, the UK. Lottery fever causes stampede for uh, for these lottery tickets. A man falsely arrested and jailed for trying to cash check at Chase Bank. 
and then mortgage company completely trashes man's home and steals all of his belongings. Cops decline to investigate. Then insurance agents say FEMA causing coverage confusion. Storms trigger near record uh, power outage in Chicago. And I think this is like Enron. I think they're doing this on purpose over weak storms and no real cause for it just to uh, increase rates. Thank you.